Yo, welcome to the Hive Hustle Podcast. Uh, I appreciate y'all being here. We're going to delve into the street culture, whether that be rap, hip-hop, uh, crump, roller skating, uh, even R&B. It's official now. The Hive Hustle Podcast about to sit you down. Go and fix your crown. This ain't a grain of salt. Pick your brain and thoughts even through a major loss. Still remain a boss. I got a great guest today. Uh, my bro Carlos Ferrar. Hey, what up, what up man? man? Hey, Appreciate you, you being me, here, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Man, I've known him, I think, since like two early two thousands, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably like two thousand seven, eight, yeah, maybe, yep, maybe yep, six. Yep. Bro, I remember when all like LVAC practices. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Well, hey, I appreciate you being here, bro. Um, it means a lot that you'll come on the show. Even though we've known each other for a while, we barely see each other in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I've watched your journey since back then, bro. Yeah, Going on tour with Genuine. Yeah, I've watched it. all of it. I listen to your music. I, I am a fan. It, thank you. Um, you are on the playlist. Thank you. Thank so, um, but I want to start first because my podcast is very inspired by the R&B Money podcast. Oh, dope. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Tank and Jay Valentine too. really, really <laughs> like their dope to me dope. like their podcast is really dope so i'm kind of on the same wave like i like to get to know that person mm -hmm. so where did it start like i know you from michigan uh detroit yep. yeah yeah so where did it start tell us um yeah. Man, i know it's, it's just... one of the basic questions yeah, but, yeah no, you know no, what I'm saying? let's cool. get it uh, in. i mean it started basically just me doing talent shows in my in my dad's living room <laughs> whoa <laughs> just, like I was in little, front of the family yeah huh? just a friend of the family really okay. just kind of developing from there and uh uh, I think the first time I sang for my mom, she kind of like took a liking to it and was like, you know, you should. She kind of persuaded my dad to like. But how old was that? Uh, that probably was like seven or eight. Okay. Ish. In that so area. early. Yeah, pretty early. Um, I was always singing and dancing anyway. Mm -hmm. But like f around that time when I was, I guess I started to like kind of develop like a little tone a little bit. And she's like, oh, maybe you could do something with, th with this. Mm -hmm. And my dad was an artist. So mm -hmm. she kind of was like, well, maybe you should. Uh, you know take a look at your son and you know so put, put your dad was in. an artist so you yeah, grew he, up in a musical family yeah yeah pretty much yep, yep okay he did he had the band over in the basement and you know that that inspired me too you know with our fathers you know a lot of times we want to you know make them proud our, oh yeah both our parents but like yeah. you know when you're a son as a dad, man you yeah, definitely, definitely want to make your dad, dad proud yeah, yeah. So yeah it was it was cool when i i noticed that not saying he wouldn't give me attention but like you know, when you do things like that, they like that they like. Yeah, they gonna give you. They like, oh, oh, oh yeah. okay, yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of took hold of that and kept going with it. And when uh, did you come to Vegas? Uh, I moved to Vegas right after I graduated high school. So and I graduated early. So I was seventeen. Like what year was six? Okay, so yeah. right when you moved here, I kind of like yeah, met you. Yeah, because I was out. I was outside, bro. Yeah, I know. I was trying to meet people. Yeah, and, like, you was connect, networking like a mug. I didn't have. I didn't know anybody here, so it was like. It, I was sad at first because I was like ripped away from your home, my home where yeah. I grew up at. And then I was just quick with it, like out on the strips singing, trying to sell little CDs, you know. CDs hey, I remember in. them days. Yeah. When CDs were in. And uh, I had I wasn't CDs because I wasn't an artist, but I was the selling the T-shirts out the trunk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, so basically you're a musician do you just sing? Do you write music? Do you uh, produce? Yeah, I songwrite. I actually was uh, around the time, maybe 11, I think the first time my dad took me to the studio, um, he was like, listen, I ain't writing your songs, so you got to write them. Oh. <laughs> he like put the- So you, cause, 11 cause years old, you started- my dad was really like, kind of vulgar. Like, he's one of them R&B singers, like yeah. R. Kelly, like- I get yeah, it. Yeah, so, and I was 11. Yeah. So he wasn't really like into like, you know, trying to dumb down- what he was His doing. His creative process. Yeah. So you're like, look, if you can write your own songs and I'll take to the studio and I'll pay for that for you, for you to record them. Hey. So from that, I kind of just started taking poetry or linking up with people at school and we kind of just started writing songs from mm -hmm. there. Um, and, and it just kind of took off from there. Um, I still write, songwrite. I work with other songwriters too. Okay. Because I think it's important to collab with okay. people. To kinda what would you say is a... Um, like an artist that you really loved writing writing for, um, right now my little cousin Amira is super. She's challenging, really, because she's not she's not grown. She ain't like a little kid either though. So mm -hmm. like, and then she's a teenager. So it's 
you got to really tap into like, okay, if I was a 16 year old girl, like, you know what I mean? In it 2023. Really, yeah, in 2023, you got to really tap into like, okay, what would I be talking about? Or like, what, what would I feel? It's, 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 it's interesting. Like the journey of like writing for different people. Um, she's definitely the most challenging one to write for right now. And then my daughter also, she's 13. So trying to, you know, get her write songs for her. It's, uh, it's different. Cause I'm wow. not a woman and I'm not a teenager. So <laughs> literally, <laughs> it's, it's definitely tough. That's definitely a, uh a skill that you have to ac yeah. acquire yeah. through time yeah. i would say like same thing with like designing logos or t-shirt designs or anything like you're working with somebody else's creative idea Definitely. and you kind of have to cater to them so that's crazy yeah man it's, dang it's cool okay well now um obviously we mentioned earlier you you went on tour with genuine yeah that was probably one of the biggest moments of your career or for like, sure definitely um, so the first time i went on tour was with my sean and when he was signed to interscope um back in like 2000 dang my sean yeah that was my dog and so we that's how i was dancing that's when i was like just dancing yeah i remember focusing on the dancing and uh, i ended up getting an opportunity to go on the bt black college tour with him in 2008 and that okay. was the first time i toured like on a tour bus and it was different wow so we fast forward to 2016 and uh my manager at the time was also you know a part of genuine's team and uh, he was like, yo, I'm putting a tour together for you. And G agreed to go headline it with you. So it, that's that's pretty much how it happened. <laughs> it was. So did G become like more of a big brother or was it like strictly business? Yeah, no, that was more like a big brother. Because I, I, looked at some business. In, I looked at some interviews like you was in the interview with him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was his first. It was, I mean, obviously, you got to get, you know, you got to build a You build a relationship. Yeah. Um, And it was our relationship was through my manager at the time. Mm. Um, but I kept coming around and I was I kept opening. And okay. he's like, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the ropes. When he agreed to do the tour, that's when it was more like, all right, it's my little bro. You know, I'm going to help you out. And you know, try to get you as many looks as I can. Um, That's dope. Because I was already doing, like, spot dates with him before that. Mm -hmm. And the tour kind of was just like the icing on the cake type of situation. Yeah. You still have a relationship with him? Oh, yeah, yeah. We talk here and there. That's He's a busy cool. guy, so, you know. Hey, he <laughs> he more viral than a lot of, like, yeah, young artists. Yeah, he, I'm like, damn, Gen Genuine got a new new video <laughs> out doing something way. crazy. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get it. He finds a way. Hey. It's so funny because a lot of people don't understand. Like, that's all strategic, bro. Like, bro, very. <laughs> I, <laughs> people think... I'm People like, think it's it's random. No, yeah, nah, they do that all, on purpose. All, like wow, the whole Usher Kiki Palmer thing. Yep. So so planned. So strategic. So, so strategic. It Bro, was brilliant. I I was on a project with Ray J and Raz B recently. Like a web develop. I was a web developer for them. Dope. And seeing like the inner inside stuff. Yeah. And seeing like okay, half of this stuff is scripted. Yeah, yeah. And it's not. Like it's not natural. Yeah, it's not not. Yeah, it's just like and, it, and people bite on it. Yeah, like they bite on the soul. Bro. He's like, all right, cool. We gotta get their attention, so they get it. <laughs> it's official now. The Hive Hustle Podcast about to sit you down. Go and fix your crown. This ain't a grain of salt. Pick your brain and thoughts, even through a major loss. Still remain a boss. Resonate with greatness. Celebrate creators. Ain't no blanket statements. Elevate and claim it. So amazed, I'm making the way for those in need. Mold the lane, showing change in the growing me. Left field, real quick. <laughs> the argument of Chris Brown and Mike. Hey, do you feel oh, that man. Chris Brown is the new Mike? Uh, or as an R&B head yourself, do you feel like he hasn't gotten there yet? I feel like it's like the Michael and LeBron debate. You know what I mean? Like, like right of our time. I'm not going to say of our time because Chris Brown is the same age as me. So I'm going to say of he, the, the generation after us, their yeah. time, I think Chris Brown is their Michael Jackson. But I'm never going to say Chris Brown is better than Michael Jackson. Like, Got you. Not, okay. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That makes sense. And I feel <laughs> the same way. Like, this, if you was born late 90s, yeah, yeah, you, you grew up think, on Chris Brown. Yeah, you, yeah. You grew up. Like, you run, it was, run It was when you were, like, seven. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, that's us when we were born in the 80s, growing yeah. up on Seeing, uh, Michael Thriller and, and all and One More Time and yeah. all of those. We grew up on those. Yeah. So I can understand that. I just don't think he's gotten enough years to be timeless as Mike. Yeah. I, That's my personal and opinion. I, you know, I think the the pace that they put music out now is kind it's of way different. different. drop another album and it's yeah. like... Uh, bro, didn't you was, come out with... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> 24 there songs? There were gaps <laughs> between these artists putting out albums. Yeah. Like when Usher put out My Way, that was 97. Then he put out 8701 in 2001. Yeah. And he put out Confessions in 2004. People are putting out an album gaps. every year. You know what I mean? It was time to kind of grow 
and get people like anticipated to see you. And I was like, oh no, Chris, I have another album on next 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 year. It ain't nothing, you know. Do you feel as an artist that is smart or like? Because I noticed that J Cole don't put out a lot of albums. Yeah, as I think art. it it worked for certain people. Like it'll work for J Cole. People love J Cole. I love J Cole. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm whatever he puts out, I'm gonna listen to. If he put it out on the consistent basis of like every few months, I don't know. I feel like it's like you lose that like. I don't know, man. That I don't know like just when you're seeing somebody all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I, I feel like you have as a as a as a creative, you have to go back in your bag. Yeah, and no matter like, what. And top, I'm that's how I create. Like I'm more of like, all right, I put out this album in 2020, my last album. Now I'm gonna mm. put out another one. It's gonna be January 2024. Okay. I wanted to really people to see the growth vocally and and just see where I'm at in my life now. When you're putting it out so consistently, it's like there's no growth from the last the first record one to, the, to the second one. And it's like, all right, this sounds like what you already put out, or are you on the same vibes or the same energy? You, the artist uh, artist that I noticed that with is er- Eric Bellinger. Eric Bellinger. I just did a show with like, him. Like, I, I love him to death. He's a great artist. Great. Great songwriter and everything, <laughs> but bro. a he lot of the stuff in. sounds the same. He does, and he keeps and he, he dropping stuff, and he keeps yeah. dropping. It's like, and I feel like it's because, okay, you're trying to really break that threshold to get to that next level. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, well, sometimes that doesn't get you. Sometimes you don't even you. really need that. Yeah. I, I would say if Eric Bellinger stopped making music for two years right now, I would still listen to stuff that came out five years ago. Yeah, because you get what I'm saying. Yeah, his because it's crazy. a great. He got a great catalog. Yeah, he's half of what my R and B playlist is right yeah, now. Because yeah. he's just one of those people that I listen to. Um, now on the other spectrum, Doja Cat. Oh, man. We've obviously seen a lot in the news. <laughs> You're a Doja, parent. Doja. <laughs> so how do you feel about? Like, do you have any thoughts on like how in the industry and music is? trying to cater to the young generation nowadays do you feel it's demonic do you not feel it's demonic um, like do you believe in religion yeah I'm what's def- that what's your thoughts okay sure, like me too <laughs> and uh i mean it does bother me like i can't i'm not gonna like front and say as an as an artist as a creative i always try to look at things with empathy and try to see it from the artist's point of view mm. and not take certain things so serious mm-hmm. but like the whole demonic, like, bro, I never like playing with that type of stuff. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I just think it's crazy that you literally look like one in your music video. Yeah, like I, I remember in the '90s, in the late, early 2000s, late '90s, like there was people that were doing weird stuff. Yeah, but now it to me, it's just blanket. Yeah, like oh yeah, like I seen some of the YouTube comments on her video. Some of them are like, I gotta go pray right now. Yeah. I like, mean, even the, the Grammy performance with uh, Sam Smith and that happened last year. I, I was tripping, bro. I was like, I cannot believe this is on television. I right don't now. watch award shows, yeah. bro. So they were like dressed as the devil <laughs> on the award show, and it was crazy, bro. It was just nuts. Like it was next level. Uh, the okay. uh, old time role, buddy. I'm gonna have to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lil Nas like X video, is a little insane. Yeah, I'm like, bro. Like y'all, it's just like I I I get it, but at what cost, bro? Like. At, yeah. I, I know you want to get people's attention and you want to keep them engaged, but at what like you cost? said, it's scripted. Yeah, it's it's definitely scripted. Like I don't know if I believe that they're actually worshiping well, the devil, but see, are you? But are you not worshiping the devil? Yeah, you, you doing that type yeah. of stuff. Well, let me ask you this: because did you see the, what happened with Hobson recently? No. I so Hobson has the the whole album where he talks about he's having a conversation with God. Right, right. Um, so he was performing it, and his creative team put an upside down cross behind him and he didn't know so they were comments on his videos like yo are you like a part of the plant and are they planting you in the industry and blah blah blah." and he went live on instagram and was like yo i fired the person that was on that i i didn't even know somebody had to show me a video of me to see that that was behind me he's like i believe in god i'm not on that that's what yeah so it's like Sometimes people that we can hire might implement something yeah, that we don't even with know. The, with, the, with the labels. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Hobson is still independent. Yeah, definitely independent. So, like, we got to watch who we even put on our team. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, That's I feel like crazy. it's definitely. I mean, and maybe the, the mistake, the upside down cross, probably for them, mm-hmm. it's a lot going on backstage at shows. So maybe hey. <laughs> maybe they just was like, oh, throw it up. And they're going to do something else. And they're not even realizing, like, oh, yo, the cross is upside down. Maybe. I don't know. And that's what we have. To, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're not in the team. Yeah, yeah. But if my thing is, if Hobson is saying it, if yeah. I'm on Hobson's team, I should know what somewhat of what Hobson likes. Yeah. So you should know, yo, the cross is upside down. Like, 
<laughs> hey, yo, exactly. Yo, this, this it wasn't an accident down, at all. Bro. Like, then that's what I mean. It's like it's it's crazy. Like, there's definitely some hands up there yeah. that are doing some stuff. That are, in my personal opinion, yeah, definitely. Like, I don't know if it's facts, yeah, but that's, I, I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. Just doesn't. You'd be like, yo, really? They just they just the way they playing with us and throwing it in our face and or playing off of it because maybe it gets more attention. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't play with that stuff at all. Like I don't want ever, I don't ever want anyone to question your integrity. Yeah. Are, are you an Illuminati? Are you, are you worshiping devil? Yeah. I never want to give that impression yeah. through anything. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where it, it, for me, it's like, okay, if you know that these things are being said, then acknowledge them. Like, yeah, but they choose. So a lot of people don't acknowledge them. And oh, that's yeah. where at least Passive I get aggressive. like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe it is. Ha- maybe they are an Illuminati because mm-hmm. they're not even, Turning it down, saying, like, no, I worship God in the story. Like, yeah. I worship Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, yeah, period. literally. <laughs> like, literally. They, don't, they don't dead it, so it's like, it leaves you wondering. Yeah. And it could be because the labels are like, no, don't say nothing. Yeah. Just us, we got it. We're going to get you a lot of money. Don't worry about it. And then and they I, just like, all right, yeah. cool. Whatever. I'm going to do what I got to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now let's, obviously you're a parent, so that has a lot to do with, like, how you feel and what you cater your beliefs to. Um, now what was, what is it, what is, and what was challenging for you to be a creative and to be a parent and how do you balance those two? Cause Um, obviously your kids are now artists. You're like, kind of like helping them become artists. So what's that look like? Uh, for my daughter, see my son, he's not, he's not really into, he was, and then he kind of was like, nah, I don't want to, I want to do other things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm never one to like force yeah. him to do anything so we ain't trying to live our yeah. life through our kids yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm like yo so my daughter she's always had that like music ear and when she finally said like this is what i want to do i was like, all right you know i had to talk with her like you know the music business is very hard yeah so you gotta love this for sure mm-hmm. like it's not it's gonna be very, a lot of disappointment probably more disappointment than than highs mm-hmm. and um but i'm gonna be right here with you as long yeah. as i can be with you you know what i mean that's good and um and just telling her to approach it with a serious energy you know what i mean like don't just don't be in it just for the looks or you know just for the uh, acknowledgement do mm-hmm. it for you you know what yeah. I, mean? I even had to learn that like just yeah. the older i got like who cares who liking who not liking like i, yeah. I don't care anymore yeah. you know what i mean and i noticed when i stopped caring i was able to create differently and just be free in what i'm doing <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. i mean i tell i tell like people that are close to me all the time like at one point in time i was a real big people pleaser yeah yeah Same. and when I got out of that, things started shifting. Mm-hmm. And when I realized, like, I can't make everybody happy, yeah, yeah. there's never going to be a time where I can. And when that clicked, that's when things started happening. Mm-hmm. And I started realizing, like, wow, this is what I'm capable that's of. That's the irony, bro. <laughs> and it's, it's a really crazy thought process that when you become more confident in yourself mm-hmm. and you become understanding that, yo, I'm human, I'm going to make mistakes... But as long as I'm not hurting nobody and I'm not messing with nobody else's life but mine, that's all that matters. Exactly. And that's, I feel like, where a lot of people get it mixed up is, like, they're so in everybody's business. Yeah, that's what... I, I just posted something the other day. I was like, I'm always rooting for you, but I'm focused on me. Yeah, literally. You know I mean, like, I'm rooting... If you're successful, amen. I, yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for you. Thing, but I gotta... But I gotta do yeah, what I gotta do. You gotta do. lock in with your life and mm-hmm. you can't pay attention to how how everybody else is making things happen or getting things done. Cause that's their route. That's yep. their journey. You know Exactly. I mean? And that's just how it is, man. And to, to like talk about the parent stuff again, like obviously you've been a parent for a very long yeah, time. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm still in my thirties and my kids going to be growing. Yeah. I, I, my friend, um, <laughs> that's nuts, my bro. friend for real, he's a DJ. He, he's like, if I'm not mistaken, about to be like 39 and he's got like a 16 year old. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, bruh, I'm going to be 38 next year. And I barely got a, Two year old. Yeah, I'm like y'all had kids early. Yeah, it was, and and not only that, it's like it's, it's, you're gonna be a like a kid raising a kid, basically. That is crazy, man. Yeah. But it changes your life. It does. It definitely. Um, and I talk to my son all the time, like, hey, man, don't be getting no girl pregnant, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like how old be, is he? My if you don't mind me asking, uh, fourteen. He just turned oh, fourteen. Okay, so yeah, he's see, a freshman in high school. And so you know, what high school you going talk. to? Huh? What high school you going right, to? I can't, I can't. Okay, my bad, my bad. My <laughs> I bad. came from the. I tell yeah. you off. I tell you off. Yeah, got you. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah, I having that talk with him and just kind of. School. Yeah, it's it because it change. It does change your life, and a lot of people don't understand. Like, yo, once you have a kid, it's about them now. Like, now everything is 
them. They literally take up your whole life. Like, yeah. And now you got to make a lot more sacrifices than you normally wouldn't have had mm-hmm. to make. And so I just try to get them to understand that. Like, yes, the kids are a blessing, but... It's official now. The Hive Hustle Podcast about to sit you down. Go and fix your crown. This ain't a grain of salt. Pick your brain and thoughts. Even through a major loss. Still remain a boss. Resonate with greatness. Celebrate creators. Ain't no blanket statements. Elevate and claim it. So amazed I'm making the way for those in need. Mold the lane. Showing change in a growing me. Once you have one, you, you your life a changes. Lot of stuff changes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I noticed that even before I had kids, because when I got when I got with my wife, she had a, her son. Mm-hmm. And I when I started dating her, I had to take on the role of understanding, hey, you're dating somebody that already has a child. Right. So you have to understand that you're immediately in a stepdad role. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm gonna pursue something with you. Like, mm-hmm. if we're just dating yeah, yeah. and we're not being serious, that's different. But yeah, if yeah. I'm going to pursue something with you, I have to take that knowledge on and think, like, okay, he's a part of the picture, too. Yep. You that's get what I'm my, saying? My girl, she has a, a daughter. She's yeah. So son, when you so. get with somebody like that, you and nowadays it's hard to find somebody that doesn't have children. Yeah. When I was true. single from 2017 to 2019, bro... I had that thought process, like, I'm not dating a girl. And then literally a year later, it shifted. I was like, I can't can't find nobody with no yeah. kids. Okay, well, hey, there we go. Yeah. And when I had my daughter, <laughs> life flipped upside down. Yeah, bro. Changing diapers is a whole different world, bro. Yeah, it is. I don't miss that. I'm not lie to you. <laughs> oh, after I this one, I'm not having no more. Nah, I, I, I'm I, done. I don't, miss, I don't miss the diapers, bro. And the sleep. You don't sleep, bro. Newborn stage is the worst stage ever. Yeah, I is. love toddler, though. Yeah, toddler's My, cool. my daughter's, just, like, talking they, a little bit. Yeah, their personality started kicking. you like, oh, you, you act like your mama. She you said no to me one day. I was like... Whole different world. I was like, no, you do not say that to me. You say that to your mom, but not me. What are you doing, bro? Now, to wrap up a little bit, you have is DJ so hype your manager? Yeah, that's, that's my brother. That's uh, yeah, he's my he's my role manager. Okay, so if we need to contact you, anybody, just to yeah, they can go through DJ so hype. Uh, my actual manager, uh, Skrilla, he's also in my uh, bio. Okay, um, both of them on my Instagram bio, but like. Basically, them two, them two guys handle everything. Yeah, everything as far as like the business side and just kind of getting things in place for me because my life is a bit crazy. You know, with we kids, all crazy. Yeah, <laughs> with kids, we bro, all, it's just like bro, they it, take up your schedule for oh, yeah. sure. So <laughs> I was just, I was just doing another interview two days ago, and we were like, if I don't have a calendar, yeah, it's if it's not in the calendar, it, it ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> and like, is this actually happening or like, we, babe, I got this to do. Is it in the calendar? No. Okay, then it's not official until you put it in the calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's next? Um, man, just the album. Uh, just been working on the album. My last one was in 2020, um, self-titled uh, Carlos Ferrar, and then this next one. I don't have a title yet, but uh, January 2024. We gonna, Can you uh, give us some scoop uh, on like what it's about? Like, um, is it? Just, I mean, I just try to develop and grow as an artist, so I really wanted to take on the task of just vocally. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of artists, R&B singers that sing and dance, they don't really get that recognition, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, he can sing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's more so like, yeah, he's a great entertainer. Like mm-hmm. Chris Brown, I'm saying, you know what I mean? Or, or Usher. Cause Usher's an incredible vocalist. Like, people don't I know. I think people up until recently didn't realize that. Yeah, cause he came out with that one song yeah, recently that. where he's uh, singing oh, high. Oh my God, the I falsetto? Feel, yeah. yeah. I was like, Usher's back. Yeah, Usher, yeah. I ain't heard this Usher since 8701 <laughs> yeah, the, type yeah, the, thing. The falsetto is... I was like, man. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, just just trying to really impress people vocally and um, just top what I did last time. Because I put a lot of heart and soul into that, that that last album I did. And it happened during... It was COVID. Yeah. So I feel like it didn't really get a lot of... Like, a lot of songs that I'm putting out, um, that I put out recently, mm-hmm. are off that album. And people were like, oh, like, Leave You Alone. I dropped that joint like... And what was it, May of last year or something like mm-hmm. that? But it was it was out in 2020. Yeah. You know Nobody really knew yeah. it. And like, there was yo, so this, much this going on hot. in the world. I'm yeah. like, yo, yo, but this has been out. To be I mean? honest with you, that's when I found out about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, no, but and, and that's it's just the way that things and that's another thing of, of advice I give to artists. Like, yo, if you if if something didn't hit the first time, just drop it again. <laughs> like just keep There's just a keep reason pushing. we have repurpose. Yeah, just keep like, just, just keep pushing it. If you really believe in it, just keep pushing it and and it'll it'll happen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? 
Yes, okay. Consistency. So you got an album coming out in January. Uh, yep. Me and my boy, my brother uh, Lee, we started our, our label. We started that in 2020, but we're actually getting things together now. Okay. In place. Um, he just moved back out to Vegas, so we got that the record label. Uh, my artist Amir and my daughter Aaliyah, mm -hmm. um, both developing and getting ready to drop music, new music. Um, That's cool. And just uh, uh, I'm my movie. It's out on Tubi. Hold, my hold, father's hold keeper. On, hold on. What? What? Yeah. What? My father's He's keeper. an actor too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. My father's. So you have out. a movie out yeah, on Tubi. Yeah. My Did father. you direct it or no? No. No. You just I'm acted. in it. I'm just in it. I'm just in okay. it. Okay. Yeah. What's it about? Um, it is about a family, a drug dealing family, <laughs> that their father got into some some bad stuff and he was murdered. Okay. And we're his sons, and we try to avenge his murder, basically. That's like the basis of it. It gets okay. deeper, but I don't want to give it too much. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Don't give us at all. Yeah. But that's crazy. I I learn something new every day, bro. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm glad that you Thank stepped you. into that. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. It's it's not a every day somebody can say they have a movie on a, on a TV network. Yeah. Or like that we're, they're a part of that type yeah, of thing. That's so that's yeah. great. Congratulations. Yeah, definitely working on more projects in that direction. Um, I really, like anything I do, I really take serious. So, I, you know, acting lessons and just kind of developing in that space also as well. Mm -hmm. um, just so people take it serious. Because I feel like everybody just, a lot of people just do stuff to do it or because they can. And that's just not the energy I move in. Like, yeah. I've never been in that space to do something like yeah. just because I can do it or just because the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. You want to at least know what you're doing. Yeah, know mm -hmm. what you're doing and just, you know, do it the right way, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Last question. What advice, like you just recently spoke about, do you have do you have for people that are trying to become a singer or an artist or just put themselves out there and get themselves like big opportunities like you've had? Um, my advice would be to develop your craft. Definitely do the ten thousand hours. Um, get you a solid team that an unselfish solid team that really believe in the vision. Mm -hmm. um, that's like the most important things and build the relationships and that's all you got to do and just stay consistent mm -hmm. build the relationships stay consistent um, and support other people it's alright to support people yeah you know what I mean like you that makes sense you know what I mean like definitely don't over support to where you're like so focused on what they're doing in their journey yeah and understand like that we were speaking journey, about earlier yeah, everybody's journey is different understand that and it's gonna happen for you when it's supposed to happen for you but definitely you know show love and uh, be be humble, but don't be humble to the point to where you get overlooked. Like, you got to, for some reason, humans just respond to aggressiveness sometimes. So you, sometimes you got to stand on, like, yo, I'm that dude or I'm that, I'm that woman. Yeah. And, and stand in that energy and people, they're going to respect it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If you put in the work and your work matches what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you being Thank here. You, Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you man. for agreeing to come on. Um, this has been Episode 6. Hive Hustle Podcast. Do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, uh, turn those post notifications on, and we'll see y'all the next time. Yeah. Peace.